Mongolia is a land of vast, untamed beauty, where ancient traditions meet breathtaking natural landscapes. Imagine a place where the horizon stretches endlessly, dotted with herds of wild horses, camels, and lamb. In this video, we will visit the Gobi Desert, one of the most iconic parts of Mongolia. It's not just a barren desert, it's filled with canyons, massive sand dunes, and fossil beds where dinosaurs once roamed. Mongolia was once the heart of the largest empire in history under Genghis Khan's leadership. The world's largest equestrian statue of Genghis Khan is in Mongolia, and it is truly a sight to behold. Mongolia is one of the last places on earth where traditional nomadic life thrives. 30% of Mongolians still live as nomads, moving with the seasons across the stunning steppe, deserts, and mountains. In this video, we will meet these nomads and take a look into their way of life. Mongolia is a place where time slows down and you can connect with nature, history, and culture that feels both ancient and alive. We'll start this video in the country's capital, Ulaanbaatar, where we will be trying horse meat for the very first time. We have just arrived in Mongolia. First time in Mongolia, a few things that I've noticed already. When I landed here, there was really nothing around this area. I saw a lot of rolling hills, there are a lot of horses, wild horses, captive horses, and actually the Mongolian airline logo was a horse. I found a place called the Bowl Hot Pot. There's a lot of people walking around the street. It's pretty unique to see. It makes it seem pretty safe around here. We are going to choose our soup base. This Mongolian beef bone soup looks good. This is the most interesting to me. It is the horse meat, the beef pizzle. Beef pizzle is actually the bull penis. I don't know about this penis. I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat all that. Can I have the Mongolian beef bone soup? Sesame sauce, cucumber, back room, lamb leg, horse, horse meat, the beef shin. I want to talk about the trip here in Mongolia. So it's going to be a 12 day tour of Mongolia. We're going to be seeing all of the different cultural aspects and pretty cool places that you can visit here in Mongolia. It's really cool to see a new culture and a new place. I didn't order the penis meat because in the picture it looked like a lot of food. I don't want to be stuck with a plate full of penis meat if I just take one bite and I hate it. There's a control under the glass here and that's to control the fire for the hot pot itself. With the broth, they also gave us this, which is bone marrow. So I can put this into the soup. The complete order is the lamb here. We have the beef shin. We have more beef here. And then this is actually the horse meat right here. We have this sesame sauce and also this seafood sauce, they call it. Bone marrow in here. Going to start with the beef back rib. This pickled garlic is really, really good. I'm gonna dip it into the sesame sauce. The sesame sauce gives the meat kind of a peanut buttery flavor, but the meat is very tender, very good. The broth is subtle. Oh yeah, I think that seafood sauce is way better. The bone marrow, there's not much of a taste to that, it's just gelatinous. Right here, we've got the beef shin into the hot pot it goes. This is gonna be pretty interesting. I've never had beef shin in my entire life. This is my favorite thing here, the garlic. All right guys, let's give the beef shin a try. This is what it looks like. Whoa, immediately that has more flavor. That has way more flavor than the beef back rib. The beef shin is way better. It's all around the same price. Each of these meat platters, they're about $4 USD. For this amount of meat, that's almost like extra chipotle. <laughs> it is time for the lamb. Absolutely love lamb. I know it's an acquired taste. I didn't used to enjoy lamb. It does have that gamey, different taste that puts some people off, but I really enjoy it. Right here, we've got the, the horse meat just waiting for us. I definitely think the lamb is number one for me right now. It is very tender. I'm only gonna put one piece on. Taste that one piece only. Here's the horse meat. Oh. Hmm. 
It tastes really gamey. Yeah, it tastes like a venison. More bland, it's like a bland tasting meat. This definitely needs sauce. The horse meat was cheaper than the beef and cheaper than the lamb. A dry, chalky type of meat. It's very lean. It's good protein. The brushed stainless steel Genghis Khan equestrian statue outside of Ulaanbaatar is a must visit for anyone seeking history, adventure, and jaw-dropping views. You can actually walk up inside the statue and stand on the horse's head for a closer view of the finer details of the statue. Standing at 40 meters or 131 feet, it is the largest equestrian statue in the world, symbolizing the power of Genghis Khan, the man who built the largest empire in history. One kilometer east of the statue is a statue of Genghis Khan's mother, Ho Lun. She gazes back at her son in the distance with a backdrop of breathtaking mountains. Below the shining statue is a museum showcasing ancient artifacts, giving you a deep dive into Mongolian history and the Khan's legacy. This statue is located at the legendary site where Genghis Khan is said to have found a golden whip. This statue reflects both Mongolia's past and enduring spirit. It's a powerful modern symbol of Mongolian national pride. We just finished our very first day here in Mongolia. I just got back to the hotel room. The first thing that we did was go to the Gandan Monastery. We saw an enormous Buddha and we saw people praying at the temples and it was really cool to see how they prayed, how they worshiped. I'm getting packed up here. We are going to be flying to Maron, Mongolia. Our destination is Lake Kovskol in northern Mongolia, a few hours away from the Maron airports. Lake Kovskol is often called the Blue Pearl of Mongolia. It's one of the largest freshwater lakes by volume, and it holds nearly 70% of Mongolia's freshwater, and it is one of the world's most pristine lakes. The waters here are so clear you can see down to 20 meters. Surrounded by dense forests, rugged mountains, and home to rich wildlife such as elk, ibex, and bears, the lake is a paradise for nature lovers. The area is also home to reindeer and yak herders. They offer a rare glimpse into the ancient nomadic lifestyle. We have just arrived here at our cabin, two hours away from the Moron Airport, and right here you can see that the lake is right outside. This is the front door. And then right here, you can see the bed. I've collected some waters. <laughs> and out here we have a balcony. Oh, hello. Thank you. And then right here is the bathroom. Right here, let's check out the shower. This is the first time I've seen this. It's all wood. The actual building is really cool. There are these two circular like cabins that we're staying in and it's powered by solar. I saw solar panels out there. On the way here, I did see a lot of yaks. Saw a lot of goats, lamb, cows, a lot of farmland, a lot of clear, peaceful spaces here. It reminds me of how open and beautiful and nature-esque Switzerland was when I was driving through Switzerland. While we were here, we were able to visit a yak family who raises yaks, milks yaks, year-round. This yak herding family has practiced the nomadic lifestyle in this area for over 50 years. See if you can spot which of these animals are yaks, cows, or yak-cow hybrids. The main product this yak herding family collects is the milk of the yaks. With the milk, they can create many different milk-based products and they bring them to the city to sell. <laughs> For sanitizer. Are you milking now? Okay, I'll go next. I want to see. Okay. Are you going to do it? Oh, yeah. They don't step on the shower. Oh, wow. The family invited us into their gear to try the yak products. Welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> Watch your hands, everyone. Mongolian nomads live in circular huts they call gears. These gears have everything they need to live in the area for the summer. It was an intimate feeling trying yak products in this nomadic home. She's going to boil the milk. After boiling with the remaining milk, she'll make yogurt. And then with the yogurt, she said she'll make a curd. Also, sometimes she also makes a uh, Cheese, she said. Oh. I'm gonna show my family that I've eaten yak products. 
So moist. Very mild butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can put it in your tea or in the water. Yeah. The fennec cheese is made from goat, so. They boiled the fresh yak milk right in front of us. The warm yak milk tasted just like cow's milk. Very comforting. We also took a boat across the lake to the reindeer people. The Tasatan people living near Lake Kovsgol in northern Mongolia are one of the last nomadic reindeer herders in the world. They rely on reindeer for transportation, milk, and survival, moving their herds through the forests and mountains. Their unique lifestyle is deeply connected to nature, and they maintain ancient shamanistic traditions. Seeing these reindeer was a rare glimpse into a vanishing way of life. I was really surprised at how the reindeer looked, especially the horns that they had. They had fur on them, or three different reindeer that we saw. They had different coats, different horn lengths, but one had enormous horns. It was beautiful. The fur covering the antlers is called velvet. This velvet contains blood vessels that supply nutrients and oxygen, helping the antlers grow. Once fully developed, the velvet is shed, revealing the hardened antlers beneath. going to be traveling most of the day until dinner time around 6 p.m. where we get to our next location. I'm loving Mongolia so far. I'm loving that I can fly everywhere here. It's so nature-esque, so peaceful, so many animals. I'm loving sharing this experience with you guys and I'll see you guys in the next clip. Mongolia is full of life. Everywhere you go, you see the signs of the ancient nomadic lifestyle. This next location will reveal to you what a modern gear will look like if you visit Mongolia. We have just arrived at our camp and we are going to be staying in one of these circular Mongolian houses. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that looks like. This is mine, we're number five. Oh, we've got a bed. Cool, so this is the bathroom. Hello, the shower, the toilet, tiny. I'm still wearing my backpack, so it's kind of tight. This is the entrance. Cool little skylight up there. Over here is more hot. Back in here, shut the door. It's like a little hobbit door. <laughs> this stove, I believe it's for the winter time. So there's no chimney that goes all the way up here. You see that? hole right there. I want to give you guys my first and honest impressions of Mongolia. It's one of the cleanest places I've ever visited. It looks so untouched and I asked my guide about this and he said that it's because there's not many people in Mongolia versus the amount of land that they have. So a lot of this area, a lot of this space is farmland. A lot of it is used to raise livestock. And that's why it seems so pristine. And it is pristine. It's so beautiful. It's so peaceful. It's so clean. Coming from big cities and everything like that, it's really refreshing to come here. The food. <laughs> okay, so the food is really good here, especially for me because I'm a meat eater. There's a lot of different types of meat that they serve here. They serve lamb a lot. There was lamb at almost all of the places that I've eaten in already. I wanted to just give you guys some honest thoughts before I go to sleep here. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. After visiting the ancient capital of Mongolia, we visited the Gobi Desert. We have made it to the Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert, I didn't expect it to be so green. It's so green out here, but not many trees. Our tour guide said that there has been a lot of rain here, an unusual amount of rain than they normally get in this area. The Gobi Desert isn't just a barren desert. Our first highlight are the Flaming Cliffs, a world famous paleontological site known for their striking red sandstone formations and their significant dinosaur fossil discoveries. In the 1920s, the first fossilized dinosaur eggs were found here, along with the skeletons of ancient species like velociraptors. The cliff's fiery appearance in the desert adds to their allure and make them both a scientific treasure and a stunning national landmark. They're a key part of Mongolia's rich, prehistoric heritage. It was amazing to see Mongolian camels for the very first time here as well as two horses sparring each other for fun. In the more mountainous regions of the desert, we saw ibex at the top of these cliffs, which was insane to see in real life.
Our second highlight of the Gobi Desert is Yolin Am, or Eagle Valley, a stunning gorge nestled in the middle of the desert. Despite its desert location, this narrow valley is known for its ice field, which can remain frozen even in the summer. The area is rich in wildlife, including ibex, sheep, and vultures. The towering cliffs and dramatic landscape make it a cool, unexpected oasis in the arid desert, offering a unique contrast of ecosystems and peaceful retreat for horseback riders and nature lovers. The double-humped Bactrian camels of the Gobi Desert are uniquely adapted to survive the harsh, cold Mongolian winters. Unlike their single-humped cousins, these camels store fat in their two humps, which helps them survive long periods without food or water. They have thick fur to protect against extreme temperatures and are vital for transport and survival in the remote desert regions of Mongolia. Yeah, he looks handsome. <laughs> I heard him burp. Oh, really? Yeah. As we rode the camels, my excitement was building knowing that we were going to visit the sand dunes of the Gobi Desert next. The sand dunes provided an incredible backdrop to our camel ride and car rides. Our third and final highlight of the Gobi Desert are the sand dunes. The dunes are also known as the Kangoran Els, some of the largest and most spectacular in Mongolia. Stretching over 100 kilometers long, these dunes rise up to 200 meters high, creating a dramatic landscape of shifting sands. They are famous for their stunning golden color and the mesmerizing sound of the singing dunes which produce a deep resonant hum as the winds move the sand. These dunes offer a breathtaking and otherworldly experience in the heart of the desert. We are here at the sand dunes in the Gobi Desert and it's nothing like I've ever seen before because look at this it is a desert right behind me but also to the other side there's some greenery it's not a complete desert through and through a big part of that is because they've gotten a lot more rainfall than normal this year so that's why we have greener pastures on this side and this side is always desert a very unique experience that uh i'm very happy i can capture for you guys it was insane to get the shots of the drone out here and i'm really thankful that i can share this beautiful place with you guys through this Mongolia video. Mongolia surprised me around every turn during my time there. It's difficult to express to people how beautiful Mongolia is with just words. So I chose to create this video to give you a deeper and more meaningful connection with this one-of-a-kind country. Thank you for exploring and enjoying Mongolia with me. I'll see you all in the next adventure.